and welcome on back. I hope you had a fantastic 4th of July. We really enjoyed ourselves. We had a beautiful weather weekend and we were able to go down to Washington DC and see the fireworks over the National Mall, which was really special. We've never done that before in all of the years we've lived in Virginia, so that was really incredible to see. So hopefully no matter where you spent your weekend, whether it was in a backyard, poolside, at the beach, inside your home, just kicking it, Hopefully you had a wonderful time relaxing and enjoyed the holiday. So in this video today, I rounded up all of my favorites from the month of June and a couple from April and May because I didn't have as many favorites in those months. So we're just gonna throw those in here just because we can. And I think that is what's going on. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the beauty category. And in the month of June, I was focused a lot on just having a nice healthy glow, both with my makeup and with my skin. Obviously in the summertime and all year round, you have to focus on taking care of your skin, using sunscreen, all of those good things. And because I have very fair skin, that's extra important. But it also means I don't get that healthy glow quite as easily as some other people do. So I do reach for a sunless tanner and this is the one that I've been using. It's the Jergens Natural Glow Instant Sun. And I have it in the shade Deep Bronze and you might be thinking to yourself, why in the world would you ever pick up the deeper shade? You are so fair, all very true. However, the Deep Bronze shade has much more of a natural color than the fair to medium shade gives off. So the fair to medium actually starts to look orangey on my skin, which is what everybody wants to avoid when they're using sunless tanner. Um, and so this one is much more natural, definitely has those bronzy undertones, maybe a hint of red, um, but it's definitely a suitable option for my skin. It does not look ridiculous at all. It just adds that nice little sun kiss glow. This is a tanning mousse, so it comes out you know, in the little pump. And I use one of those mitts to apply it onto my body and make sure I don't have any streaks on my hands or it doesn't leave any streaks um, on my skin itself. Dries in 60 seconds. It does transfer a little bit if you go straight out into the heat and you're wearing shorts, you're probably gonna notice it rubbing off on your shorts, but usually I just sleep um, with this on once it's dried for a little bit. And then in the morning, I'm good to go with a nice natural looking tan. So I've been using this for, um, a couple of summers now, so it's definitely a winner in my book. Now that product is only for your arms, legs, stomach, back. It's not meant to go on your face. So I was looking for something where I could apply it to my face and kind of even out the look a little bit more instead of just having to use bronzer with my makeup to kind of even out my skin um, and my chest, or my neck and my chest if I've tanned this area. So what I found is this L'Oreal Sublime Bronze Self Tanning Facial Drops. This is what it looks like. So this has a little dropper in the bottle. Make sure I don't spill it on my white couch here, but obviously it has a little eyedropper. And what you do is you mix this in with your favorite moisturizer, whichever one you use at nighttime or in the morning, and you add about five to 10 drops is what the recommendation is. I noticed that five drops really didn't make much of a difference on my skin in one use. 10 drops definitely gave me that healthy glow the next morning but just a hint of a glow. So it's definitely something that you could build up over time, but if you're just looking to, you know, even out your skin color a little bit with the rest of your tan, or you're just looking to add a little bit of glow to your face, this would be a great option. And I like that you can control how much of the actual tanning agent, like the active agent in here, is going onto your skin, whereas some of those other facial tanners you're not really sure exactly what you're gonna wake up with. So I like that you have the control with this and I would definitely recommend this if you're nervous to try tanning on your face um, and your fair skin like I am, I would start with this. Just start with a few drops and then you can increase it as much as you want to add in more of a glow. And this last one snuck in at the end of the month. It's the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup. It is a primer, concealer, highlighter, and BB cream all in one. So quite a few claims. I really have been enjoying this just for those simple five minute face looks here in the summertime where I want to have a little bit of makeup on to have a little bit more confidence when I go out and about, but not really fuss with it a whole lot. So I just dot this on. I have It has um, one of those little puff kind of tops. If you've ever seen any of the um, Instant Age Rewind line. They already have a few of those out with the under eye concealers and brighteners. 
It's got that little puffy top. You just twist to um, have the makeup come out. I dot this all over the face. I take one of my quick blending brushes, blend it out as needed, or you know, pat it into the skin. A little bit of powder where it's you know too shiny in the T-zone, mascara, maybe a cream blush if I feel like it, and then I'm good to go. So I really like this for those quick five-minute face looks, or you know, just a quick everyday summertime look where I'm not going out of the house, but I just want to keep my makeup routine. This is a nice one to try. Next up is fashion favorites, and if you're a subscriber here on my channel, you probably know that I am a big fan of Stitch Fix. I do monthly unboxing videos, so I will link my latest one up above. I had a big June haul because I received two boxes um, from Stitch Fix last month, and I got lots of great clothes, some misses as well, but I really enjoyed what I received and also picked out from the Stitch Fix shop um, last month. So again, you can check that video out up above. However, aside from all those beautiful Stitch Fix clothes, I usually wear t-shirts and shorts if I'm just here around the house most of the day or I'm running a quick errand or I'm out walking the dog. It's hot, it's summertime, I don't need to dress up every single day. So I wanted to pick out some really fun casual t-shirts and these are all from small shops. So this first one that I'm sharing is from Blair Lamb Design. She's over on Etsy. And it's this beautiful little seashell in, um, it's an embroidered seashell with navy thread on a pretty aqua blue comfort colors t-shirt. So I love that one. Obviously screams summertime. This one screams summer as well. This I found, this small shop I found on TikTok. It is the shop Tailgate Pups. They do lots of cute little dog designs. And this one is a little golden retriever floating in the pool with his little um, water bottle and his tongue's hanging out just like Gus all the time, although Gus is not interested in swimming in the pool. We're trying to get him to swim, but even with his life jacket, he's just not having it right now. Anyways, this last one is from the small shop Zippity Tees, and their focus is on creating so many cool Disney-inspired designs. This one is inspired by Finding Nemo, and it says, fish are friends, not food has all those different little um, fish on the shirt. It's got this really cool blue tie-dye pattern. And then on the back, I know the tie-dye kind of covers up the design a little bit, but it says in the big blue world and it has another fish there. In the big blue world is a lyric from the Finding Nemo ride at Epcot, if you've ever been on it. And anytime I wear this shirt, that song is stuck in my head. If you know, you know. are from small shops um, all of these were actually comfort colors t-shirt brands so a little bit more roomier than some traditional t-shirts are but I would still recommend that you size up if you want that oversized fit and I did also want to let you know that um, I've seen this with a few small shops already but due to COVID there's all kinds of manufacturing and production issues and a lot of small shops are struggling to you know get their inventory back with their shirts their hats or whatever items they use to put their designs on. So for example, I know Blair Lamb Design, her Etsy shop is currently closed for that reason. However, she did have a really big inventory of items that she had already embroidered or screen printed. So she's gonna be having a pretty big sale here at the end of July, I believe. I think she's inventorying and taking pictures of all of those items right now. So. Go ahead and follow her over on um, Instagram so you know when her sale begins and her shop opens because I know some of these uh, items like the seashell t-shirt that I have will be discounted which is awesome. So definitely go follow her over there and just keep that in mind with the small shops that you are visiting that their inventory may be a little bit low but it will bounce back eventually. Now for Amazon favorites in the month of June, I haven't been doing a whole lot of shopping for myself on Amazon. Most of the stuff I've been purchasing is honestly for Gus, which is very convenient and easy with that two day shipping. But I did purchase a couple of items and they're actually both bags. And this first one is a brand new beach bag that I'm going to be taking on 
our vacation in a couple of weeks. So here is what it looks like. Super cute little woven grass bag, has the faux leather straps, um, a little faux leather tassel, and then a cute little bright yarn tassel, which you can, you know, take on and off. Um, it came totally separately when I received it. The back is totally plain, and then it has this little navy blue and white stripe um, fabric on the interior. It's also on the inside of the handles. But the top of the bag has a zipper, which I think is really nice for making sure all of your items stay inside, they're not going to fall out, and it's just another added layer of security on the beach if you are swimming in the water, which I like. The only thing is that those zippers don't go all the way end to end. So there is a little gap on the side, but it's still helpful. And then here is what the inside of the bag looks like. So it's not the biggest beach bag ever, and honestly, I didn't want an oversized one. A lot of the ones that I saw at Walmart and Target were just too big, and I need to be able to fit this in my carry-on suitcase. So this will definitely fold nice and flat. It has a little pocket, zippered pocket here on the inside, and then on the other side, there's a couple of little pouches, you know, for lip balm, sunglasses, sunscreen, whatever I might need. But I'm really excited to take it on vacation. It will fit all of the essentials. And like I said, it will fold down really flat so it can go inside my carry-on with no problem at all. The second bag is this really cute little woven circle purse that I picked up. Um, it has a nice little lightweight adjustable strap, so there's a little buckle on that side. But the reason that I picked this up is because I had seen this paired with so many different looks on my Stitch Fix page, and the one that they were selling was definitely a bit more money than I wanted to spend on a purse, especially something that's a little bit more seasonal like this one is. So I went on over to Amazon, found this one, ordered it, and have been super happy with it. Um, it's definitely not a purse where you can fit every single thing under the sun inside. Definitely has limited space, so there's fabric kind of holding it together. And hopefully you can kind of see inside there a little bit. It could really only fit your phone, a couple of cards and some cash, your keys, sunglasses, lip balm, maybe a couple of other items. But if you fill it up too much, you won't be able to clasp it shut with the snap but that hasn't been a problem for me. I like to travel light. If I'm going to you know, a winery or we're going to dinner, I don't need to bring everything under the sun. So this has been a great little accessory for summertime. Moving on to Gus's category, which is pup stuff. So this includes items that we've purchased for him um, that we've really you know, found very useful or things that we purchased for him that he has just loved and maybe we don't find as useful, but he's very happy with them. So the first item up is a little bit more practical and it's definitely for our use. It is this mobile dog gear backpack and John picked this up from Costco. It may not be there because he got it a couple months ago and we're now just kind of putting it to use, but it's definitely still on Amazon so you can find it there. But basically this is Gus's diaper bag essentially. Um, if there is such a thing for dogs, it's kind of like his little go bag. So everything that we need for taking him out of the house is always stored inside here and we keep all the extras. We keep extras of everything inside this bag. So it is nice, it has all kinds of pockets. It has pockets on the front, on the inside. The inside is divided into three compartments. So there's kind of like a flat compartment in the back and then there's a Velcro divider here kind of separating the two sides. It came with a couple of these pop-out um, feeding or drinking bowls. So if we need to give him water and you know we're at a park or something, we have a way to do that easily. And then it also came with like a little placemat that you can put those under, but we really just don't need that at all. Um, so in these two compartments, we usually have extra treats and extra toys that we pop in there. And then on the side, there is a place for a water bottle, or in this case, we're using it for some wet ones because he always seems to make a mess wherever he's going, muddy paws, sticky, all kinds of things. Then on the side, there's this really um, slim pouch and we keep any, you know, little bags in there for cleanups to make sure that we're picking up after him. And then the very bottom, it has kind of this little big zipper pouch 
kind of like one of those insulated cooler backpacks. Um, the bottom is not insulated, however, we like that it keeps items separate from the rest of the bag. So we often will put kind of some of his stinkier treats in here or if something got wet or his toy is really slobbery, we'll put it in here at the bottom. But this backpack is awesome. Again, we keep it right next to the door, nice and cool so none of the treats spoil or anything like that. And it's just really helpful for when you know we decide to take them along with us. We don't have to scramble, grab everything out of the cabinets. We just keep doubles of everything in here and it makes life a little bit easier. This next one has given us a lot of peace of mind. It is this Bully Buddy. It's a bully stick holder from the brand Bow Wow. We found it on Amazon. And if you're not familiar with what a bully stick is, it's a type of treat that you can give to a dog. Um, it basically looks like a really long piece of beef jerky, and it's something that they sit and gnaw on for quite a while. Um, and it does break down relatively quickly, unlike, you know, bones or raw hides would. But Gus really loves them. We feel great about giving them to him with this in hand because the problem with a bully stick is that once the dog chews it down to like two inches, maybe one inch, it can really become a choking hazard and dogs have definitely choked on them before. And sometimes when he has this out in the yard, he runs away with it uh, from us when we want to take it from him because it's getting too short, which is why we bought this because we didn't have to want to have to worry about him you know, choking on it anymore. So essentially what you do is you take the nice big bully stick and here's a little hole inside. You put the bully stick in and then there's a little key on the end where you turn it and this little purple piece, hopefully you can see that, it secures the end of the bully stick right here so that when the dog chews on it all the way to the end, it's not going to come out and then it's nice because when we go to pick it up, we don't have to fight him over it because he knows it's done and we just unscrew it, out falls a little piece into the trash can and we rinse it and it's good to go for the next time. So if your dog likes bully sticks as much as our little Gus does, definitely give this a look on Amazon. Now the last one in this category may not have been Gus's favorite, but it was definitely very helpful for us. It is this little recovery onesie. And I guess I shouldn't say it's super little because right now kind of off his body, it looks a little weird. But it's a recovery onesie and I shared about this on Instagram because Gus had a planned surgery a couple weeks ago. He was neutered and so we were preparing for that and I ordered this off of Amazon because my sister let me know that it was a thing um, and an alternative to the cone or one of those blow up like donut collars that's similar to a cone but a little more comfortable. So when we got Gus home from the vet, he was wearing the cone and he really didn't like it. Surprise, most dogs don't. It's an uncomfortable thing. However, it's effective in keeping their surgical area nice and clean and dry while it heals. So we finally switched them into this little onesie. It was not very hard to put on. This one actually went over his head and front paws first. However, there were some that snapped all the way around the dog. Um, you can find those on Amazon too. This one he really liked and it fit very well. Once we had it on him, he was out of that spot that he had been sitting in. He was walking around the house, very happy, and never once did he like roll around to try to get it off. He didn't bite at it or tug at it. Obviously it's gonna be different with every dog, but I highly recommend this if you're planning to get your dog neutered or spayed. Maybe pick one of these up off of Amazon just to have on hand and see if it's you know, a successful little um, recovery tool for your pup. And the last category for this monthly favorites video is food and I have a delicious recipe to share. I probably wouldn't share it if it wasn't delicious. So anyways, it's this burst cherry tomato pasta. I shared about it over on Instagram already. I've made it several times in the month of June. We'll definitely continue to make it here in July. It's very easy, light and fresh for summertime, which I know that many people just don't want to sit down and eat big dinners in the summer just because it's so hot and that just doesn't make you feel comfortable to sit down and eat a big meal in the heat. So this is perfect for that. It kind of came about because I had a bunch of cherry tomatoes on the counter, I had a bunch of basil out in the garden that I needed to prune and then I was searching for a recipe and this one came up. So essentially I boil a pot of linguine pasta, very easy, and then on the other side I heat up some olive oil. The washed cherry tomatoes go in, make sure you pat them dry so you don't get a big oil flare up. You let those simmer and cook until they burst 
and then you add, you start, you know, you have your garlic in there to begin with, you have some red chili pepper flakes, salt, pepper, you combine it all with fresh basil and Parmesan cheese, and it's just so good. So if you give it a try, definitely let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it as much as I did. Of course, you could add chicken or some kind of protein on the side, but sometimes you just want a nice bowl of pasta. And now that I've made you hungry, I think that is it for my June favorites video. Of course, all of the products that I mentioned and the recipe that I just talked about, um, all of those links will be in the description box down below so you can check those out there and leave me a comment if you give anything a try. I always love to hear from you guys. I do my best to respond to, respond to as many comments as I can and I really enjoy seeing those notifications come up on my videos. Also, if you're enjoying the content on my channel, I would truly love it if you would hit that subscribe button so that you can receive notifications. It also just means a lot to me to know that you're watching and enjoying the stuff that I'm sharing. But thank you so much for just watching this video and I will see you all really soon. Bye.